Every day, Americans discard more than 100 million cardboard boxes. That translates to roughly 450 tons of cardboard entering recycling facilities every minute across the country, feeding a massive industrial recycling network. But have you ever wondered how that Amazon package you tossed in the recycling bin transforms back into a fresh, usable box? From collection to pulping, cleaning to pressing, this is how 450 tons of cardboard waste becomes a valuable resource again through an incredible industrial process that saves millions of trees annually. Cardboard is everywhere in our modern world. It delivers our online orders, packages our groceries, and even houses our favorite electronics. It's one of the most common materials in our daily lives, and we've been using it commercially for over 150 years. Why? Because cardboard is lightweight, strong, versatile, and most importantly, recyclable. Unlike many materials that degrade with each recycling cycle, cardboard can be recycled up to seven times before its fibers become too short to use. That means the same cardboard that brought your new TV home could be reincarnated multiple times before finally retiring, potentially saving up to six trees from being cut down in the process. Before diving into the recycling process, let's understand what we're actually recycling. Cardboard, as we know it today, has roots in 19th century innovation. The first commercial paperboard box was produced in England in 1817. Later, in 1871, Albert Jones of New York patented corrugated paper for packaging fragile items, marking the beginning of corrugated cardboard. But it wasn't until 1879 that Robert Gare, a Brooklyn-based printer and paper bag maker, revolutionized packaging by accidentally inventing the pre-cut foldable cardboard box. When a metal ruler used for creasing bags shifted and cut them instead, Gare realized he could mass-produce flat, pre-scored boxes transforming shipping and packaging forever. By the early 1900s, cardboard boxes had replaced wooden crates as the preferred shipping container for most products. The material was officially called corrugated cardboard because of its distinctive wavy middle layer sandwiched between two flat sheets. This simple but ingenious design provides remarkable strength while using minimal material. Today, Corrugated cardboard is a $67 billion industry in the United States alone, with over 1,500 corrugated manufacturing facilities producing more than 35 billion square meters of cardboard annually. That's enough to cover the entire state of Rhode Island, twice. The recycling journey begins at your curb. When you place cardboard in your recycling bin, local waste management trucks collect it along with other recyclables. These collection vehicles aren't your ordinary garbage trucks. They're specially designed to keep recyclables separate and minimize contamination. Once collected, the cardboard makes its way to a materials recovery facility, or MRF. These massive industrial complexes are the first stop in the recycling process, where different materials are sorted and separated. A modern MRF can process up to 50 tons of recyclable materials per hour. Upon arrival at the MRF, recyclables are dumped onto the tipping floor a cavernous space where front-end loaders push materials onto conveyor belts. This begins an elaborate sorting process that combines cutting-edge technology with human oversight. The first stage of sorting involves manual removal of obvious contaminants. Things like plastic bags that could jam machinery or non-recyclable items that somehow made it into the recycling stream. Workers stationed along the conveyor belts quickly pull these items off as materials pass by. Next. The mixed recyclables go through a series of mechanical separators. Large rotating drums called trommels with different sized holes allow smaller items to fall through while larger ones continue on. Cardboard, being among the largest items, typically stays on the conveyor, while smaller materials like glass and aluminum fall through to other sorting lines. Then comes one of the most impressive pieces of technology in modern recycling, optical sorters. These high-tech machines use near-infrared light to identify different types of materials based on how they reflect light. When cardboard is detected, jets of compressed air precisely blasted off the conveyor belt into a separate collection area. These optical sorters can make up to 900 identification and sorting decisions per minute with remarkable accuracy. Powerful magnets pull out any ferrous metals, while eddy current separators repel aluminum and other non-ferrous metals. 
Finally, what remains is primarily paper and cardboard, which moves on to the next stage of sorting. At the end of this sophisticated sorting process, cardboard is separated from other paper products, compressed into large bales weighing up to 2,000 pounds each, and prepared for transport to specialized paper mills. These bales are stacked and loaded onto trucks or trains, ready to begin their transformation back into useful products. When the bales of cardboard arrive at the paper mill, the real transformation begins. First, quality control inspectors check the incoming material for contamination levels. Even small amounts of food residue, oil, or certain adhesives can compromise the recycling process and the quality of the final product. The acceptable bales are fed into a giant machine called a hydropulper, essentially an industrial-sized blender. This massive vat holds up to 20,000 gallons of water and powerful rotating blades. When the cardboard enters this chamber, it's mixed with water and chemicals that begin breaking down the material into its constituent fibers. The hydropulper spins at approximately 350 revolutions per minute, generating tremendous force that separates the cardboard into individual cellulose fibers within 10 to 20 minutes. The resulting mixture, called pulp slurry, has the consistency of a thick, gray milkshake. This pulping process is where the true science of recycling happens. Cardboard is primarily made of cellulose fibers derived from wood. These long, strong fibers are what give paper products their strength. Each time cardboard is recycled, these fibers get slightly shorter, which is why there's a limit to how many times cardboard can be recycled before it becomes unusable. The pulp slurry contains not just the valuable cellulose fibers, but also contaminants like staples, plastic tape, and adhesives that weren't caught in the initial sorting process. These materials must be removed before the pulp can be used to make new cardboard. The cleaning phase employs several specialized processes to remove unwanted materials from the pulp. First, the slurry passes through a series of screens with progressively smaller holes that catch larger contaminants while allowing the fiber-rich pulp to pass through. Next comes a fascinating process called de-inking for cardboard that contains printed materials. De-inking uses a combination of chemical and mechanical methods. Special soaps called surfactants bind to ink particles, causing them to separate from the cellulose fibers. Then, air is bubbled through the mixture in large flotation cells the ink particles attach to these air bubbles and rise to the surface as a frothy scum that can be skimmed off. For removing smaller contaminants like sand, clay, and tiny plastic particles, the industry uses hydrocyclones, conical devices that spin the pulp at high speeds. The centrifugal force pushes heavier contaminants outward where they can be separated from the lighter cellulose fibers. One of the most advanced cleaning technologies is the through-flow cleaner, which uses pressure differentials to remove particles as small as 0.15 millimeters, about twice the width of a human hair. These cleaners can process up to 500 gallons of pulp per minute, maintaining the high production rates needed to meet demand. After cleaning, the pulp undergoes a bleaching process if white cardboard is the desired end product. Modern recycling facilities have moved away from chlorine bleaching to more environmentally friendly alternatives like hydrogen peroxide or oxygen-based bleaching agents that achieve whiteness without the harmful byproducts. The result of all this processing is a clean, consistent pulp, ready to be transformed back into cardboard. At this stage, the pulp contains about 99% water and only 1% fiber, but that's about to change dramatically. The transformation from wet pulp to solid cardboard happens on the paper machine, an engineering marvel that can be longer than a football field. The process begins at the wet end, where the diluted pulp is spread onto a moving mesh screen called the forming wire. As the pulp travels along this mesh, water begins draining through by gravity, and the fibers start to mat together. Additional water is removed by vacuum boxes beneath the mesh that suck more moisture from the forming sheet. This initial water removal is critical. For every ton of cardboard produced, up to 20,000 gallons of water must be removed. After sufficient water has been drained, the still wet sheet passes through a series of press rollers. These massive steel cylinders apply up to 400 pounds per square inch of pressure, squeezing out even more water while simultaneously compacting the fibers 
to increase strength. At this point, the sheet contains about 60% water, still far too wet to be useful. Next comes the dryer section, where the sheet winds through dozens of steam-heated cylinders at temperatures reaching 300 degrees Fahrenheit. These rotating drums gradually remove the remaining moisture through evaporation. Computer-controlled systems monitor moisture content throughout this process, adjusting temperatures and speeds to ensure consistent drying without damaging the fibers. For corrugated cardboard production, three separate sheets are produced. Two liner boards, the flat outer layers, and one medium, the wavy middle layer. The medium passes through a special machine called a corrugator that forms its characteristic wavy pattern by applying heat, steam, and pressure. Then, in a precise dance of timing and adhesive application, the three layers are bonded together to create the finished corrugated cardboard. Modern cardboard manufacturing lines can operate at speeds up to 3,000 feet per minute, producing enough cardboard in a single day to circle the equator. The finished product is wound onto enormous rolls weighing up to 30 tons each, ready for conversion into boxes and packaging. The cardboard recycling process we've explored isn't just an impressive industrial feat. It's an environmental necessity. For every ton of cardboard recycled, we save 17 trees, 7,000 gallons of water, 380 gallons of oil, and 4,000 kilowatts of electricity. We also reduce landfill space by 3 cubic yards and decrease air pollution by 60 pounds. In America alone, Cardboard recycling saves more than 700 million trees annually. If all the cardboard recycled in a single year were laid flat, it would cover nearly 8 million acres, an area larger than the state of Maryland. The recycling rate for cardboard in the United States currently stands at about 92%, making it one of our most successfully recycled materials. However, the remaining 8% still represents millions of tons of cardboard unnecessarily sent to landfills each year where it takes up valuable space and releases methane as it decomposes, a greenhouse gas 25 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Every time you break down that Amazon box and place it in the recycling bin, you're contributing to an industrial process that conserves natural resources, reduces energy consumption, and helps mitigate climate change. The simple act of recycling cardboard has profound ripple effects throughout our environment and economy. Thank you for tuning in. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution.